Hey there, Nick back with another, uh, just one's kind of a quick, relatively beginner-friendly Photoshop tutorial about how to make large multi-image collages for Instagram, obviously using Photoshop. And I've got an example of that right up here on the screen. And you've probably seen these before, and I'm sure if you're watching the video, you know what they are already. But basically, you create a large, beautiful collage in your Instagram feed by uploading a series of individual images that when they you know see them in consecutive order, it creates a larger image. It's a great way, you know, if you're artist, painter, photographer, uh, really anything even promotion-wise, like it's a great way to highlight something in a really prominent way in your feed. And it's also pretty easy to do. Um, the one thing you got to think about, first of all, when you're going to do this, is what format is the picture that I want to cut up? Is it a square? Is it a large portrait? So, uh, portrait format, like what I have here, you know, it's taller than it is wide, that means it's portrait. Or is it landscape, meaning wider than it is tall? And that's going to kind of tell you how many squares or how many pictures you might want to use. So this particular thing that I have up here is one of my um, prints or pieces from a little while ago. Um, this one is 11 by 17. It was an art print. And basically that means, you know, in order to kind of do it justice in Instagram, I wanted to do something that was a little taller than it was wide. So I ended up doing a format of four by three or basically four down and three across, which was a total of 12 pictures. But it just depends on the picture. Um, this is another one here that's kind of the same deal. This is another 11 by 17. And again, four pictures down, three across, a total of 12. But, you know, if your picture is more wide than it is tall, it might not need to be that kind of crazy. It could literally just be maybe two pictures down and three across right here. And the picture that I'm going to use for this video is just a really large, uh, high-resolution square image. So the graphic that I'm going to be making, the cut-up collage, is only going to be a total of nine images, or three by three. Now, you can't do this with just any old picture. Like, you can't just take um, a single Instagram image and somehow magically blow it up and crop it into this. It does have to be high resolution. It just absolutely kind of has to be. Otherwise, it's going to end up just looking like a blurry mess. And you want it to, you know, even on the individual image level, still look kind of crisp and, you know, ideally as good as it can on Instagram. So one fact that you really do need to know before getting into this is the actual resolution of Instagram photos. And this is always probably going to change in the future, but as of recording this around mid-February 2016, that size is 1080 by 1080 pixels. So technically, if I wanted to um, you know, take my image, which is this, and chop it up so that I can display it really largely in my feed like this, I need to cut it into nine perfectly equal squares that when I upload in succession will form a graphic here and that means that I need to cut it into basically nine images that are exactly the resolution of what image uh, Instagram takes and like I said that's 1080 by 1080 and I don't know about you but I am not the best at math so I actually like to keep it to a nice round number which is 1000 by 1000 so if I want to take this picture and chop it up into nine squares I'm going to make a canvas in Photoshop that is 3,000 pixels wide and 3,000 pixels tall. And yeah, there's going to be, a, you know, it could technically be a little bit of a higher resolution, but that small, small drop in pixel count, no one's really going to notice on Instagram because the general image quality is not great on Instagram to begin with. And uh, it's not really that big of a deal. And it also just makes the whole process much, much easier. So the first thing that we're going to do, all right, and um, I'm going to place a link to this file. So if you want to follow along with exactly what I'm doing, uh, check the description below in the video. And there's going to be a Dropbox link that you can just download this image and do exactly what I'm doing, which might make your life a little bit easier. I'm going to open up Photoshop. And we're going to make a new canvas. And our size is going to be 3,000 pixels wide. Again, make sure you're using pixels, not inches. 3,000 pixels tall. And then our resolution is going to be 72 because that's web or screen resolution. And then I'm going to click OK. And what I basically have is a huge high resolution square that is 3,000 pixels wide and 3,000 pixels tall. And the next thing that I'm going to do is, again, I've got that picture right here on my desktop. And I could do this a couple different ways. I could go up to File and Place Embedded, which is how I usually do it. But you can also just drag and drop from the desktop. All right. And it's going to pop into your canvas. Now, depending on how you've got your Photoshop set, it may end up filling up the entire canvas. But mine is not doing that. So I'm going to enlarge it. And I'm doing this by holding 
the option shift keys together and dragging the corners out and that enlarges the picture from the center point and also keeps the proportions nice and uh, well, nice and proportionate, which is how we want. We don't want things to get stretched out in uh, unpleasant ways. Um, and I believe if you're on PC, that is the um, Alt Shift and drag the corners. So once I've got this in my project, I'm just going to hit the return key or the check mark up here at the top. And that gets us out of free transform mode. And now for our next step, which is going to be kind of like we're basically setting this document up to be sliced or cut into nine equal parts. We need to turn on our rulers, which the shortcut for that is Command R, or you can go up to View, and Rulers is right here. And it's possible yours might be set to inches at the moment when we actually want to use pixels. So I'm going to right click on the ruler and just make sure that you've got pixels selected right here, which is what we want. Now what we're going to do, we're going to make what are called guidelines. And if you've used Photoshop before, you're obviously probably familiar with these, but just in case, um, guidelines are just kind of like a digital straight edge, They're like a bright blue line, and you can you can customize the color, of course, but you kind of use them as uh, a ruler or a way to line things up, or in this case, what we're doing, we're using them as kind of a way to define each of those uh, equal parts of this thing that we can kind of cut up. And just to show you what I'm talking about, bring your, uh, I'm going to bring my cursor over here to the ruler on the left, and I'm going to click and drag from that ruler. And as I bring my mouse out, I get this long vertical line, and this is basically my guideline, and it's nothing yet. But I want to place this exactly 1,000 pixels in from the left, and you can kind of follow that along the top ruler. And then I'm going to do that one more time, and I'm going to drop it at the 2,000 pixel mark. All right. Now we're kind of zoomed out right now and we're working with a fairly high resolution file. So there's a strong possibility that those guidelines that we dropped in are actually a couple pixels off, which we're gonna fix in just a little bit. Because to do this and to do it right, it really does need to be pixel perfect. Otherwise you end up with weird gaps and it doesn't quite fit right. But uh, I'm gonna do the same thing horizontally, but I'm gonna do that from the top ruler up here. I'm gonna click and drag. And again, now we're looking at the ruler over on the left. I'm gonna drop it at the 1000 pixel mark. And then the same thing down here at 2000, just like that. And we can kind of already start to see with these guidelines um, what we're doing. And if we just take a look at what this looks like, and then also what that Instagram feed looks like, you can kind of see that we are making a big square right here out of nine individual images. But like I said, we are relatively zoomed out right now, so there is a strong possibility that those guidelines that we placed in are a little off, not quite accurate. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, first of all, what I usually like to do is, um, I usually like to work in full screen mode, which is the F key. The F key, or F key just kind of blows it up full screen and turns off any menus, and we're kind of like just looking at Photoshop. And then what I would do once you have guidelines placed in your project, again, these bright blue lines here, you can move them and manipulate them using the move tool, which is at the top uh, of your toolbar right up here. And, you know, as you would kind of guess, the move tool just moves things. And if I hover my mouse over a guideline, you can see that the little icon pops up and that shows these little arrows that it can tell me, hey, I can move this left and right. But the trick to this is we actually need to zoom in and we do that using Command Plus or Command Minus, which zooms in. And I honestly don't really care too much about the picture itself. I'm really just looking at the guideline, which is right over here. And I'm looking at that in relation to uh, the ruler. And I can see that, yeah, this was actually a little off. It might be kind of hard to see in the video, but um, it is just a little over a 1,000. And... Also, if you're new to Photoshop, if you hold down the space bar and click and drag, it's called the hand tool. It lets you just kind of zip around the canvas pretty quickly. So to fix this and get it really like right on 1000, I'm going to grab my, uh, using my move tool, I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag right to 1000. And you can definitely tell like the guideline uh, when it is right over the line because it just kind of, it almost lights up in a slightly different way. And I've dropped that right there, and I can see that is perfectly on 1,000, which is good. That's what I want. Now I'm going to jump over, again, spacebar, click and drag, and we're going to do the exact same thing. 
with this other line because that 2000 pixel uh, guideline was a little off and I'm just going to drop it there. And now we also have to do the same for the two horizontal lines. And at the moment, my toolbar is kind of blocking my ruler. So I'm just going to click and drag and just move that in like a little bit, just like that. Space bar, click and drag. And actually, I think I went too far. There we go. So now I'm looking over here at the left. And when I move this, I'm looking for that kind of perfect spot right over 1,000. And there we go. That looks good. And then space bar, click and drag. I'm just going to zip down to my other horizontal line, which with this picture is a little tough just because the background graphic that I'm using, uh, this is the album artwork for uh, my band's album, which comes out in March. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Go check it out. Orbismusic.com. Uh, there we go. And that color is pretty similar to what our guidelines are, so it can make it a little tough to read. Now, like I said, if you ever wanted to, you can change the guideline color, and you do that up in Photoshop Preferences, and it's going to be under Guides, Grid, and Slices. And you can really make it any color you want, but that actually looks pretty good. So this is perfectly right on the 2000 mark, which is exactly what we want. Perfect. And now if I zoom back out, Command Minus, I can see that that is looking really nice and neat and it looks pretty damn even to me, which is exactly what we're going for. So that looks cool. Perfect. All right. Now what we want to do is we need to start chopping these out and there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. I'm just going to show you uh, the method I've kind of discovered that's really quick. You can get into things like slices in Photoshop, which also works pretty well. But uh, we're basically just going to be copying and pasting and just like rapid fire saving these in succession, which is really quick. So what I need to do, I'm going to go up to file. We're going to make a separate canvas that's going to basically be um, our individual Instagram pictures. And we're just going to be doing all of them in the exact same canvas to keep it simple. I'm going to go up to file new and I'm going to make a canvas that is 1000 pixels wide. 1000 pixels tall and the resolution is going to be 72 and then I'm going to click OK. All right, so I basically have a 1000 by 1000 blank canvas right now. Again, perfect square, which is ideal for Instagram. Now there's a shortcut that lets you switch between open projects in Photoshop because just because we created a new canvas doesn't mean that the old one's closed. It's still there. It's just behind the one that we're working on right now. Control tab. That just lets you cycle through anything that's open. And if I had like four projects open at the moment, it would go like one, two, three, four, and kind of just in a nice cycle. All right. So we are basically going to use a tool called the Rectangular Marquee, which is right over here. It's a selection tool. And selection tools just let you isolate a specific part of the project or layer so that you can do things like copy and paste and delete or fill with color, things like that. Just real basic, very useful. But we want to make sure for this to really work right that if you go up under view, we have this option here called snap. And what snap does, uh, most of the time it's really extremely useful, but sometimes it can be a little bit annoying. Um, what snap's going to do is just uh, look at this. If I draw a box and as I start to get close to the guidelines, you see how it kind of snaps or locks onto the guidelines? That's what snap does. And it's great, but there's going to be some times when you would want to turn that off if you're unable to make really gradual adjustments because that's, you know, sometimes that's what you're going to want to do. But in this case, we really want to get right to the guidelines. So we want to have snap turned on. So you could start at the top left. You could start at the bottom right. It honestly doesn't really matter. It's just whatever is kind of, um, you know, more logical to you. You know, personally, just thinking about the way that Instagram works and how you upload those pictures you know, I want to probably start at the bottom right because that's going to be that first photo that I upload. So it's going to go bottom right, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. And again, if you use Instagram, you're familiar with how the pictures upload. So I'm going to drag a box right there. And again, it snaps right to those guidelines. And I basically have this area selected right here perfectly. All right. Now I'm going to try and copy which is just Command C or Control C on PC, or you could go up to Edit, Copy. And then I'm going to do Control Tab, and that's going to knock me back to this Instagram template. 
and then I'm just going to paste it right there. So what I've got is basically picture number one. And you could go up to File, Save As, and just fire off a JPEG, you know, one right after the other. But what I like to do is use, because it's a little bit faster for this specifically, um, under File, Export, we're looking for something called Save for Web. And uh, if you're in an older version of Photoshop, it's actually going to be, um, it used to be right here under, um, it's been a little bit since I've used an older version, but I think it was right under Save As. Um, what Save for Web lets you do is just really quickly just fire off a bunch of JPEGs in a uh, probably a, a really fast way. So we're going to be able to do exactly what we're trying to do very quickly. So if I go to Export, Save for Web, yeah, I'm not going to go into a, a huge thing about Save for Web, but it's basically just a really in-depth, um, customizable way to compress image files so they, they work a little bit faster on the web. And, you know... This is something that was a lot more important back when internet speeds were a lot slower than they are now, but it's still pretty useful for this. And uh, all we want to make sure that we have here is up here at the top, we should um, be using the JPEG or PNG 24 format. They're both going to work fine for this. And we want to use a setting of very high. And what we're looking at right here, as long as you have this option at two up, the left box here is basically the original picture the one over here is the compressed or lower quality JPEG. So as far as quality settings go, again, you're not going to have any problems with file size with something this small. Um, I usually keep it somewhere around 80, depending on the photo. You can sometimes get away with a lower number or higher. You're just looking for how does this compressed or how does the compressed one on the right look compared to the original on the left? And I can see that that's you know it looks fine to me. And I'm going to click just save here at the bottom. And what I would do now is maybe make a folder and call it, um, I don't know, maybe Instagram or whatever you want to call it. And then I like to number the photos uh, in succession. So I would save this one as one.jpg. I'm going to click Save. And there we go. The first picture is done. And now if we control tab and we go back to our original picture, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use my rectangular marquee, copy it, control tab, jumps back to this one, command V to paste. All right. And then we're going to use that save for web control or um, command that we used a second ago. And there's also a shortcut for it, which I use a lot. Um, it's just command option shift S. All right. And uh, if you're on a PC, um, I don't use PCs too much when I'm doing uh, Photoshop and, and Illustrator stuff, but the shortcut should appear right here. It's probably going to be something very, very similar. All right. Now, the cool thing about this is the quality settings are saved from our last go around. So we actually don't need to change anything. And we can even just hit the return key instead of you know, moving the mouse all the way down to the bottom and clicking save. Return. Save it as 2.jpg. All right, uh, we'll do one more. Control tab back to the original picture. I'm going to draw a box over this bottom left corner with my rectangular marquee. Copy it. Control tab switches back to this one. Paste it. Command option shift S. Save this one as three dot jpeg and then to do this i mean you are literally just repeating that same process over and over again and uh so i'm just going to kind of skip forward when we have all nine saved all right so skip forward a little bit and i've got all nine images done using that same technique again just rectangular marquee copy paste into the new document save a quick jpeg and ideally number that so uploading them is going to be nice and easy and uh, now this whole thing is going to look really great on mobile phones. And of course, it also looks pretty good if you're browsing Instagram on the desktop. And I think I've got something open here. So this is an Instagram feed, um, you know, via Google Chrome on a desktop. And this is uh, one of my Halloween pieces. That's just kind of some cool fan art. Um, this was a pretty large one. And it looks pretty cool on the web. All right, but it does look a little bit better on the phone because those pictures are going to be a little bit tighter together. And what I've got, once I've saved all those things, 
again, that's in my folder here called Instagram, is I have 1.jpg, 2.jpg, 3, and so on. And, you know, however you get to these, these you know, like to your phone, it's up to you. I usually, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but I usually just email them to myself. I don't know why, but it seems to work pretty well. So if you're on Instagram, the important thing is that when you upload these, in order to kind of keep that, you know, effect intact, you got to make sure that when you're uploading them, you got to do them all, you know, one right after the other. Don't throw in any other pictures in the middle of uploading all nine. They have to go up in that proper order. Otherwise, the uh, the whole beautiful collage just won't work out that great. So you'd upload one .jpeg first, two, three, and so on. And once you upload that last ninth image, um, it's going to look just like this. I've got another screenshot here on my desktop. Take a look. And these were just uploaded. And again, consecutive order. And you can see it fits really nicely in that Instagram feed as a really big, beautiful collage. And again, you, any graphic that you make will, uh, as long as you cut it up properly, upload it in the proper order, and have divided it into the proper number of individual pictures, it's going to look pretty good. And you, know, you really want to try to use higher resolution pictures. And keeping in mind that Instagram photos are, for the most part, around 1,000 uh, pixels wide. The photos that you would use to chop this up should, you know, ideally be at least around 3,000 pixels wide because it's going to get chopped into thirds. So again, it looks really great on a mobile feed here and also looks really cool on the desktop. All right. All right, so that's it. That's my method for doing that. It seems to work really good. And um, I've been using it for a while with, uh, you know, gotten pretty quick at it too. And once you do it like one or two times, you can kind of crank these things out very fast. Uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Go check out my channel. And of course, you know, hit like and subscribe if you'd be so kind. That would be awesome. Uh, I've got some other tutorials over my channel and a bunch more coming up. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope it helped.